Okay, so we're back. Sorry, that was my phone. I'm at home. The phone rang and I had to go grab that. So we're showing that atomic mass and mass number are two different things. And your atomic mass is what you see on the periodic table, which is the weighted average of isotopes that are found in the world around you. Okay? So on this first problem, we have a concept that most of our isotopes have a mass of around 14. Therefore, our concept is that our answer should be about 14. So we did our calculation. Here's one isotope, and so that's the first component. There's the second isotope, so that's the next component. And both of them add together to get 14.01 AMU. Okay, now be careful that you don't get distracted by your concept of what average means, in which you would take 14 plus 15, and I'm going to drop off all those zeros just for simplicity, divided by 2, and get an answer like 14.5. That's what happens when people do these weighted averages. They then take their answer here and divide by 2, or they take these two answers here and divide by two. And that's why I always tell people to get a concept of what it is you're calculating before you uh, have your final answer. Okay? All right. Neon has three naturally occurring isotopes. So instead of two parts to our weighted average, we're going to have three. Okay? One has a mass of 19.99 AMU and a natural abundance of 90.48%. So that tells us that our concept is that we're going to have around 20 AMU as our final answer. Okay? Here's our second isotope. Here's our third isotope. So all we're going to do is we're going to add those three components together times their natural abundance. Okay, so we're going to have 19.99 times 0 0.9048 plus 20.99 times 0 0.00270. Okay, move that two places, make sure we did that right. Plus 21.99 times 0 0.0925. Okay, so here's the first isotope, here's the second isotope, here's the third isotope. Alright, so we're going to get our calculator. 19.99 times 0 0.9048 plus parentheses 20.99 times 0 0.0027 and parentheses plus 21.99 times 0.0027. 0925 equals. Okay, so we've got 20.1777 AMU, and let's just go ahead and double check. So 19.99 times 0 0.9048 plus 20.99 times 0 0.0027 plus parentheses 21.99 times 0 0.0925. Oh, we like when that happens. We like when we get the same number twice. Okay, so let's round to four significant figures just for standard practice and say that our atomic mass of neon, according to our distribution here, is 20.78 AMU. Excuse me, 20.18 AMU. Okay? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to practice these. You should be able to find some in your book. You should be able to find some on the online practice that I gave you. But this is different for many of you who came from 110, because we don't tell you how these numbers are arrived at, what we do is we just say, here they are. Okay? All right. Now I want to take just a few minutes, since I'm going to have two separate videos here, 
and talk about the development of where this proton, neutron, and electron business came from, okay? And so I want to get to a certain place that will help us understand that really what this is about is about finding out where the electrons are, okay? So let's go back to the very beginning and say, okay, we have only the proton and neutron that contribute to mass, and so atomic mass is well and good and all, but where are the electrons? Again, this is not an easy question to answer. So if we start at the beginning, what we can say is that if we have a cathode ray tube, and let's say we're going to shoot atoms through this cathode ray tube, okay? And we're going to put a magnet around this cathode ray tube, okay? So I'm going to be like the magnet, okay? So the magnet would go here across this way, all right? So I might have a cathode ray tube that looks like this, and I would put the magnet like that. So I'm going to have a plus here and a minus here, okay? So I'm going to put the plus here and the minus there, okay? Now, when I shoot those atoms through that cathode ray tube in the presence of that magnet, I'm going to have particles that are going to deflect. Some are going to deflect this way, some are going to go straight through unscathed, and some are going to deflect that way. And since these at quote unquote atoms were split into three parts, that's qualitatively how we get three particles. All right, now the ones that are deflected towards the positive would have to carry a negative charge because pluses and minuses attract. The ones that go through unscathed have no charge or are neutral. Okay? The ones that are deflected towards the minus would have to have a positive charge. Okay? So qualitatively, that's how it was determined that there are subatomic particles with a, uh, with a plus, a negative, and a neutral. And so qualitatively and very simplistically, that is how it was determined that there was a proton, a neutron, and an electron as subatomic parts of the atom. Okay, that then leads us to a very famous experiment, which was Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Okay, now here's a, here's a picture of this. Um, and this is a little hard to, to understand in a picture, so how about I do it this way? We're going to get a really, 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 really super thin piece of gold, okay? So you could pretend that, that this piece of paper is gold, and I'm going to turn it on its, on its edge, okay? So here's my super, super, super thin piece of gold, okay? And I'm going to shoot atoms through this gold foil, and these are actually alpha particles, which is what you see right there, which isn't really an atom, but it's a pretty decent model, okay? So if you're going to shoot atoms through a solid surface, what would you expect to happen? So you could envision, for example, that you've got a BB gun or something like that, which, by the way, you should not play with because they're not toys, um, but if you, sh if you shot a BB gun, let's say, at a wall, you would expect that those BBs would, like, get stuck in the wall, or they would bounce back at you, or something like that, because a wall is a wall, and it's a solid structure. Well, what ended up happening was when these alpha particles, which is our model for the atom, were shot at this gold foil... There's a detector over here, and what happened was that most of the atoms just went straight through, okay? And, and again, that would be like envisioning you having a BB gun, and you're shooting at a concrete wall, and the BBs go straight through. That is a really, really difficult and weird sort of concept. And what that is saying is that that concrete wall isn't really solid, it's mostly empty space. Okay, so here's our atom. And, and the fact that most of these went through showed that the atom is mostly empty space. 
Now, on rare occasion, the, the atoms would bounce back, okay? Indicating that occasionally it hit something that was solid that caused it to boomerang back. And that then is our teeny, teeny, tiny nucleus, okay? In the scale of things, the nucleus, um, here's the scale. If, if you took a football field as your model of the atom, your nucleus would be the, about the size of a pea, okay? So the reality of it is, is the outcome of Rutherford's gold foil experiment is that the atom is mostly quote unquote empty space and that there's a teeny tiny, teeny tiny nucleus presumably in the middle, which consists, and this was not Rutherford's gold foil experiment, there were a whole lot of other things, but nonetheless, it was determined that the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. So, here's where we're going to leave on this. What about the electrons? What is the problem with saying the electrons are just outside? Well, if this is my atom, and my nucleus is here with the protons and the neutrons, what that is saying is that our nucleus is positively charged. And so if we have electrons that are just out here somewhere, what do we know about pluses and minuses? Well, we know that pluses and minuses attract. So what would happen is these electrons would just simply spiral right into the nucleus and we would basically have, instead of a football field, we would have something the size of a pea. And so the outcome would be that the electron would spir spiral into the nucleus and you might say, well, okay, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that then is that you basically have atoms with no, mat uh, with no volume. And I'm going to put exclamations by this and stars by this so that I can emphasize to you that this is a real problem. If human beings are made of atoms, and atoms have volume, that's great and well and good and all, but what, it, what happens when you take away that volume? You basically have no human beings. And you might say, well, okay, but everything is made of atoms. So you have no people, you have no animals, you have no earth, you have no sun, you have no universe. This is not a minor problem, this is a huge problem. So, in moving forward, the real nature of all of this is where are the electrons? Okay? And this is where we want to pick up in the classroom or on an additional video.